I don't usually do my pruning indoors at the vise. But when I do, I prefer to use a pruning saw in my sawzall. Technically, it's the hack saw. That's with a Z, mind you. And this thing is dull. It's time to fit a new one. Let's head back over to the As we say in the English-speaking Western world, greetings and salutations. I don't know if this will actually become a video that you see, but I've got a day off from the day job and I'm hanging around in my garage, just wasting some time. When I thought to myself, hey, I could be wasting other people's time too. You may not have known this about me, but I've got a bit of a green thumb. Nasty rumors about me and my Irish neighbor aside, I'm talking about gardening. Maybe it's not really gardening. That's more my wife's thing, the whole fruits and vegetables, tilling the earth, sweat of her brow sort of thing. I tend mostly to the trees, cutting them down, planting, pruning. When I'm not busy grifting, I like to do some grafting. Also dabble in a bit of polyorchidism, but that's a video for another time. Anyway, it's winter and not really the season just yet. Unless you got some apple, maybe some pear trees that need fixing, which I do, or rather did, they're already done. But this thing was already dulling on me and I ordered a pruning saw that I've been meaning to fit and only now just getting around to it. Before we do this, a couple of details we should talk about. These saws are meant for hand saws, like manual. However, I'm fitting them to a powered saw. If you decide to do this yourself, well, be careful. Pruning saws are nasty all on their own, never mind going 100 miles per hour at the push of a button. I did this a few years ago, and I'm happy with how it's worked out. Initially, I guess like any normal person, I was just gonna buy a pruning saw for my hacksaw. That's with a Z. Easy peasy squeezy lemon, right? Well, as it turns out, no one makes them. I didn't readily find a pruning saw that I could attach to a powered hacksaw, a sawzall. And nine times out of 10, that right there is a bad sign. One exception. I don't know if they did a few years ago, but Lee Valley now lists a pruning saw for sawzalls on their website. If you're wary of making your own or looking for someone to sue after you've cut your arm off, you could go the commercial route. Short story long, I did what I did last time and got a replacement saw to modify. But not just any saw. I got a silky saw. Oh yeah, big spender over here. Let's back up just a minute. This story runs so deep it's mind bending. Just one second. This last spring I upped my pruning game and decided to get a silky saw. This is actually the Gone Boy. I hate that name. Anyway, if you run in the same circles I do, and I'm sure you do, you'll hear a lot of wild claims about these saws. Crazy sharp, effortless cutting, etc., and so on. I always found it a bit pretentious, and they're expensive. Depending on which size or style you buy, you could be laying out $100 or more for one of these saws. This one was 40, maybe 50 bucks. At first, maybe that might not sound like a lot, but keep in mind you can get two or three razor sharp Coronas at your local hardware store, or 20 ice cold Coronas at your local bar. Either way you go, that yard work is done. Cut to the chase, I bought one and now I'm a convert. So when I went to buy saw for the Sawzall, I thought, what the heck, and got the silky replacement. You see right there, this one is meant for pruning, camping, and what in the actual fuck? While I was at it, during checkout, I was recommended these. These are, I don't know, Callisto brand Sawzall blades. Coliaster or whatever but they're for pruning. In fact, they're for pro pruning. None of that amateur nonsense. It was a eight pack, it was pretty cheap, but in my haste, I bought the wrong size. They're a little short, but should do. We'll try them head to head and see if I haven't been wasting my time. I'm sure you can see they have a different tooth profile and they've got a relatively decent set, not as much as I'd expect for a pruning saw. Set meaning how much the teeth are staggered. Like you think a saw has just straight teeth, but they're not, there's a little bit of set. That makes the cutting edge wider than the blade, wider than the body, and should help to keep the saw from binding in the cut. This no-name brand I had on there also has a set, or it had a set that's pretty slight, for the same exact reason. Now these silkies, on the other hand, have no set. I don't know if they're the only ones that do that. They have no set, but the entire blade is taper ground front to back. So this is actually thinner at the back than it is at the front. 
all that grinding work is probably why these cost more. So let's get to work. Wow. So that's more of a chisel grind or a chisel tip compared to what I have been using. We'll see if that makes a difference. First thing I want to do though is figure out where this attachment geometry is going to live on this blade. Sort of where to put it and at what angle. You may have noticed that this is a curved saw. This, for example, is a straight saw. And that attachment feature, the orientation of it in this curved saw, will set how it fits in the hacksaw. I just want to be careful I don't give it some strange angle and then this curvature runs into the clockwork. Though that looks like I got plenty of space in there. I guess I shouldn't go too low and maybe straighten it out with the body of the saw. So something like this direction here. I don't know, maybe like that. So basically drill this hole here and then grind this shape out. I don't really need a pruning saw this long. If I make some bonehead mistake here, I can just shift everything forward and I can try it again. Hey, well, since you brought it up, I personally am a curved saw kind of a guy. You can get pruning saws curved or you can get them straight. I think that's straight, is it? Yeah, that's straight. Theory has it that straight saws are easier to use if you're cutting like right in front of you, maybe up to shoulder height. But if you get into cutting over your head or leaning way down low, curved saws are supposed to be better. All I really know is that I'm definitely not carrying around two freaking saws. And I found, for the kind of pruning that I do, I guess, curved saws tend to stay in the cut better without jumping around as much. But frankly, either way, you always start off all smiles and excited to get the job done, and it turns into hard work. Sooner or later, straight or curved, they're both gonna suck. Though generally, maybe I'd say this. If you're an idiot like me, and you're climbing up in your trees to do the pruning, holding on for dear life, and just trying to reach that one branch so you don't have to go get the stupid ladder, my experience, the curved saws are handier. If you're looking for something general purpose, low branches around your backyard, maybe you need a saw for camping, or you're just looking to satisfy your bloodlust by hunting with a pruning saw, the straight ones are probably the better choice. Either way, like I said, do be careful. These latest pruning saws ain't your grandpa's wood saw hanging out in the shed. This has gotta be like a million razor blades just waiting to take a piece out of you. Dang, that is some tough stuff. I'll try this with some carbide. An end mill in the drill press is never a smart idea. Now you can use a dull drill bit or a broken end mill as an alignment tool. I was going to blue up this blade and scribe it, but that's not going to happen. This thing is tough as nails. My Sharpie doesn't even write anymore. Now it's just a whole bunch of... You can probably tell this is gonna work because I'm sitting down now. There it is. There it is. FYI, it is very sensitive to this shoulder height. If it doesn't quite get in there, that cross pin won't drop or whatever's in there. Ball detent maybe. Feels good. Silky, take one. Well, now if that ain't egg on my face, I don't know what. That is definitely sharper. Hopefully you can tell how clean that cut is. But to be honest, it didn't feel that much faster. Let's try one of these Calypso blades whatever they're called. Huh, I thought that was smoke. It's just sawdust, I guess, coming out of the cut. That feels a lot slower to me. That's a brand new blade. Try the silky again.
I don't know if that was any faster. If it was faster, it was pretty close. But the cut quality is night and day. I don't think you can feel this through the video. Apart from the gray smear that I think is probably just coating the paint on that other blade, it's just a rougher cut. This down here is smooth as my shaved bottom. I know what you're thinking. This old Tony, are you on crack? Well, not today I'm not. I realize we're not trying to make fine furniture here. I realize we're pruning trees. But if you were gonna graft into this thing, you would want as clean a cut as possible. Granted, I could be a little bit CDC about these things, but even when pruning, I think the cleaner cut you have, the better. Like, think about it. This is an open wound for the tree. And just like if you cut yourself, well, like a cleaner, neater cut, if you will, will heal a lot faster. If you ever cut yourself with an X-Acto knife, even if it goes pretty deep, a couple of days that thing is fine. Hit yourself in the knee with a chainsaw, though, totally different story. And that's kind of what I think the difference is here. I mean, sure, it's subtle. Heck, I mean, it's not subtle, it's night and day. This is rough and this is smooth. In terms of pruning, this is probably just fine. I just edited everything you've watched so far. My apologies. Boy, was I all over the map on that one. Instead of trying to explain where I thought I was going in my head versus what you saw on screen, let me show you a bit of a demonstration. Let's pit these three saws against each other. Place your bets down below, and we'll talk about what happens after you see it. For clarity, we're about to see a manual silky saw versus a manual moderately used Fisker saw versus a brand new powered silky saw. Which one do you think will win against this four inch limb? Three and a half, four inches. This isn't super fair to the Fiskers. It's a shorter saw. These other two are the same length, but nonetheless. Pretty wild, huh? Did you see that coming? The silky handsaw is three times faster than the silky powered saw. Not so silky anymore. The Fisker is about two times faster than the powered saw, give or take. But again, not super fair. It's not as sharp, but probably more importantly, it's a shorter saw. Do you know why the manual saws beat the powered saw? Do you have that sinking feeling in your stomach I'm about to tell you? which coincidentally is likely also the very reason you don't see this style pruning saw on reciprocating saws. The powered saw on its own can't clear the chips out of the cut. The sawdust, I guess, gets in its own way and slows the saw down. As a matter of fact, you can see just how packed these center teeth are, the teeth that were in the cut. Check this out. The teeth are only moving back and forth maybe half inch or five eighths. I don't know, maybe that's three quarter. In this four inch limb, the teeth are just oscillating in the cut. They're cutting, but they're not moving that cut material out of the way. Consequently, the saw can't drop further into the cut. If you go back and watch some of the cuts I do with this blade, you'll see me moving the saw in and out of the cut, like you'd use a manual saw. That's an attempt to get the chips out, to clear the saw and to use more of it, not just wear out the middle. Obviously, I'm not doing that good of a job. Both the manual saws, on the other hand, were almost full stroke, almost full blade length. Plenty of time and space for the sawdust to get out of the way and let the saw do its thing. I'm sure if we went back and looked at the footage again, we'd see the fastest saw is also the one clearing the most chips. Maybe if I were to put my mind to it and use the full stroke of this saw, like or cutting with a handsaw, I bet this would be just as fast. Okay, about 19 seconds, a second slower. Granted, that was just one cut each, but essentially the same time. Of course, though, using this like a handsaw sort of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? So basically, the powered pruning saw isn't the right tool for this job. Not the right tool for four inch limbs. One or two cuts, if you came across something bigger than you were expecting, sure, not a big deal. But you're not firewooding with this thing. Not happily, anyway. 
This, I suppose I find handy for maintenance pruning. I don't know what you'd call it. Anything maybe you'd use a hand lopper for. This would be good for that. Maybe up to two inches, one and a half, two inches. At those diameters, the stroke of the saw has plenty of time to clear the sawdust. The problem with a lopper, when you're in a tree that is, is that you need two hands, which you might not always have when you're in a tree. But one-handed, this thing gives you more reach. You can hold on with the other one. And you don't have to do the jitterbug 15 feet off the ground like you would with a handsaw. Now, of course, the smart thing to do is get your ladder or a pole-mounted pruning saw, but this ain't one of them highbrow channels. So what is the right tool for this job? Well, if you don't have too much to do, a pruning handsaw is the most convenient. If you've got a lot to do, or maybe bigger diameter than this, You really can't beat a top handle pruning chainsaw. This is the 192. I think there's a pro version of this, but this thing has been awesome. If you've got a sharp chain on one of these, the cuts aren't bad either. Again, if you wanted to graft into it, you'd probably want to clean it up first with a very sharp knife or something. But for fruit or ornamental type trees, again, just stuff maybe you're maintaining every year, carrying this thing up there with you is pretty dangerous and it's noisy. And you need to bring gas and bar oil and sometimes it's just more of a pain in the butt. You might be thinking, hey, old Tony, you should get one of those battery-powered mini chainsaws for pruning. The best of both worlds, right? Like maybe one of those Milwaukee hatchets. But come on, let's be serious here. Those things are toys. Toys designed exclusively to separate you from your money. It'll be a cold day in OMG. This thing is so... had this that long, but I take back all the bad things I've said about these little pruning saws. I mean, the jury's still out on how it holds up, but some of the things I said were quite ugly, sometimes vulgar, and perhaps unwarranted. I hope this goes without saying, but this is in no way an endorsement for Milwaukee or Silky or Fruitwood for that matter. I'm just already bought into the Milwaukee battery system, so here I am. That said, I do like this thing, however. The six amp hour batteries, they seem to last a long time. Granted, I'm not logging with this, just pruning, general cleanup, stuff like that. It does, however, drink bar oil like you wouldn't believe, faster than a gas saw. But maybe it's just a tiny tank and I'm not used to it. Just seems like I'm always topping her up. It does use a full chain. That means every single link is a cutter. This right here could lock you into Milwaukee replacements, unless you or your local shop is willing to make these chains. Not a deal breaker, I guess, but hadn't even thought about that when I bought the thing. Don't know what else to really say right now, except it's probably not going to replace my battery pruning saw. For small branches, you know, the stuff you're usually trying to clean up, they wiggle around a lot, and this saw chews through them instead of like cutting. It's very ragged, like, you know, a chainsaw. But I don't think I'll hesitate to throw this in my trunk instead of the gas saw for the occasional larger branch. But in any event, I'll always have my trusty handsaw. I suppose that's it for now. I have no idea where I was going with this, but I do appreciate you tagging along. Thanks for watching.